Welcome back with your physics teacher with me, Mr. Fernando. And in this video, we're going to be still considering our friend Sonic, but now we're going from, we're going from a velocity time graph, and we're going to show how we can get the displacement during a given time interval for a velocity time graph. So as a quick little recap, here we have uh, Sonic, and Sonic is speeding up because he's moving away from the hoop, as we said before. And he continues to move away from the hoop, so still speeding up. But these two graphs have two different steepness, so they have a different slope. And the slope of the velocity time graph, so here, sorry, I should put velocity, meters per second. So the slope of the velocity time graph gives us the acceleration. So if we look at a one second interval, the change in velocity is 3 meters per second. So the acceleration for the first section, let's call this A1, is 3 meters per second per second. During the green line, if we look at again another one second interval time, we notice that it's changed by 2 meters per second. So the acceleration for the second portion is going to be 2 meters per second per second. And we recall that whenever the velocity is positive, this is going to indicate the direction of motion. So here Sonic continues to speed up away from the origin towards the positive values. First, his velocity is changing this quickly, then his velocity is changing that quickly. So now we have a pretty good idea of everything that's going on with Sonic, but we don't know how much distance he's actually covered in each time interval. So we're going to break this down into between 0 and 4 seconds, and from 4 seconds to 8 seconds. So let's see what we're going to do next. This is a bit of a trick, and it took like a Newton level thinking, so it is going to come out of nowhere to you. It won't make 100% sense, but you have to put a little bit of trust in your physics teacher, all right? What we're going to do, we're going to calculate the area under the curve. So the first curve, or line, is the purple one. And by calculating the area, it means from the graph to the x-axis. But of course, here we're talking about time. So the first area is between 0 and 4 seconds. And what kind of shape does this look like to you? That's a triangle. Let's label this area 1. Now we're going to do the same thing for the green portion. And again, we're going to calculate the area of the curve. So this is the line. It's just called area under the curve, but it could be for lines as well. And we're going to calculate the area up until the 8 second. So let's highlight it with the color blue this time. So we're interested in all of this area. But notice that this area is not so easy to calculate because it's an irregular shape that we're not so used to. Whereas for area 1, it's just a triangle. But what we're going to do for area, for the second portion, we're going to split it up into two pieces instead. So the area under the line or under the curve for the second portion is going to be made up of a triangular piece and a rectangular piece. So let's add some labels here. This would be area 2, area 3. And area 1 is just the area of the triangle, which, if you recall the formula, is going to be the base times the height divided by 2. And area 2, which is just a rectangle, is just going to be the length times the width. Area 3 of triangles, so again, base times the height divided by 2. So let's do those calculations, and then we're going to verify them shortly. So just give me a moment. Area 1 is going to be base times the height divided by 2. What do we mean by the base? Well, that's going to be a 4 second interval of time change. 4 seconds. And what is the height? 10. But what were the units? 10 meters per second. So let's calculate this. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 10 is 20. And the units were seconds times meters per second. 
Now notice here, the seconds is in the numerator and seconds is in the denominator. We can cancel those two out, which gives us units left over of just meters, which is how we calculate distance traveled. So 20 meters. Again, I am using a lot of approximations here and I'm skipping steps, but if you're more interested in how to calculate areas, you have to click on math videos to learn about that, right? So the first area of Sonic is covering 20 meters. So what that means is that in the first 4 seconds, there's a displacement of 20 meters. Then let's calculate the other areas. Area of the second portion, which we're taking into a rectangle, which is going to be length times the width. Length is going to be a four second time interval change. And the width is going to be 10 meters per second. 4 times 10, that's going to be 40. And once again, we have seconds times meters per second. So the units of seconds will cancel out and we'll have to work with just 40 meters for area 2. But we're not finished yet because we still need to calculate the third area, which is the one of the triangle. So area 3, base times height divided by 2. The base in this case is again 4 seconds. height is from 10 to 18, so that's going to be 8 meters per second, divided by 2. So here we have 2 will be just 16 meters. Okay, then we can combine this into thinking, alright, from 4 seconds to 8 seconds, the whole area is going to be area 2 plus area 3, which is going to be 40 plus 16, which is 56 meters. So during 4 seconds to 8 seconds, the area is going to be the area of 2 plus the area of 3, which is going to be 40 meters plus 16 meters, which is 56. So Sonic, during the second motion piece here, has a displacement of 56 meters, and the first 4 seconds, 20 meters. So now we almost have a full story. And it gets more exciting because we can represent this with a graph, so it needs that position versus time graph. So I'm going to show you how to do the next, so stay tuned for the next video.